So what's going on in here when we fail, and how can we fail better? Hi everyone, my name is Chris, and welcome to Tread Talks, where I walk on this treadmill to stay in shape while making videos for you fine people. Over three months ago, I made a video talking about how I would lose 40 pounds in 90 days, and I'm here to tell you that I failed. And so now I'm dealing with that failure and trying to fight the temptation to give up altogether. Kind of like when you've already had that pint of Ben and Jerry's Americone dream, and you think to yourself, well, I failed, so I might as well fail spectacularly. That's clearly not the healthiest way to go about it, and so I wanted to take a look at, for my own sake, how our brains react to failure, how it impacts us, and how we can fail better. The first thing I found is that even though there's a lot we can learn from our mistakes, what actually happens is that failure can often leave us mentally weaker, resulting in more mistakes in the near term. In one study involving monkeys performing a particular task, if a monkey performed well in one trial, then their performance would actually improve in the second. But if a monkey made a mistake in one trial, even if it was a task they had already mastered, then their performance would suffer in the next trial. And there was another study in which a large population of students was taken through two reading comprehension tests. After the first test, a random sampling of the students was told that they failed compared to their peers. Those students ended up performing worse in their second reading comprehension test. Part of the reason for this is that when we fail, it can trigger feelings of stress or anxiety or simply thoughts that distract us. And so if we're faced with the same situation again, we can still make poor choices. I know that when I've overeaten, the next day I'm still dwelling on that failure and I'm grumpy and I'm upset, I'm not fun to be around, and how can I expect myself to make good choices when I'm in that state of mind? And then second, I found that when we fail, our brains have a tendency to want to abandon ship altogether, meaning not only do we fail again, but we fail in a more spectacular manner. In one particularly cruel-sounding study involving pizza and cookies, dieters that thought that they had ruined their diets because of the pizza ended up eating 50% more cookies than dieters who thought that they were still within their calorie limits. There's something about our brains that make us want to abandon ship when we've fallen short of our goals. And we don't know exactly why that is, but I think when it comes to dieting or losing weight, it's a combination of feeling crappy about your failure combined with the fact that you think that food will make you feel better. Okay, so failure can lead to more mistakes and sometimes more spectacular mistakes. My thinking is that if we're aware of these things, then we can come up with strategies to better respond to failure. And so here are a couple that have worked for me. To start with, instead of dwelling on the failure, reimagine it to lessen the impact it has on you. Research suggests that we actually have the ability to edit our memories, and that every time we remember something, we have an opportunity to alter that memory. It's the reason why the centipede that you killed this morning was this big, but when you tell your kids about it two years from now, it'll be this big, and you'll truly believe it. And so one suggestion is that every time you remember the moment of failure, you play it back in your mind as if it were being displayed on a television. And then every time you remember it, you shrink that TV down, make it get further and further away from you. Maybe turn it black and white. And the result is that after you do this a couple of times, the power that that failure has over you is diminished. And second, when you go about setting that next goal, you might be tempted as having avoid failure as the thing that motivates you. Because you don't want to go through that negative experience again, right? But the problem is that that's a negative objective. So something you want to avoid, and that tends to be less motivational than something that you actually want to move toward. I made this mistake recently when I made a bet with someone that I would get to a certain weight by a certain date, and if I didn't, then I would have to do all these negative consequences. I can tell you that I made the goal, but it was a miserable experience, and I had to promise myself pizza afterwards in order to make it through that final stretch. And I did it in an unhealthy manner. These are not good things, and so I need to refocus on that positive goal that has kept me going all this time, instead of trying to set negative goals that are about avoiding a failure or negative consequences. And finally, when you're tempted to abandon ship, take a moment to remind yourself that that mistake pales in comparison to all the positive choices you've made so far. The idea here is to not focus exclusively on where you went wrong, but to dwarf that mistake with the number of successes that you've had so far. For example, let's say you've been on a diet for a week and then at the end of the week you fail and you overeat. Well, that instance of overeating pales in comparison to the six or seven successful days you had before that. And somehow the urge to abandon ship is diminished when we start to recognize how much good we accomplished on that ship. Okay, so reimagine your failure in order to diminish its impact on you, set positive goals that you want to work toward instead of things you want to avoid, and use your successes to lessen the likelihood that you'll want to give up altogether. These are the things I'm going to try to remember as I figure out what's next, but I hope that it's helpful for you. And if there are ways that you deal with failure that I didn't mention, please put it in the comments. I'd love to know, and it'll add to my arsenal. And if you like this video and you want to keep up with my content, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, and it would be great if you were a part of that group. Beyond that, you can hit the little bell icon to be notified when a new video goes up. Either way, thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.